Section 13.6, colloids. Colloids are also called colloidal dispersions and they're suspensions. So they're, it's something that's kind of hanging. <clears throat> Let's say you have a something suspended in the air. So you have some dust. Well, the dust is really, really big compared to the air. So eventually the dust will settle out. Even if you have a dusty room or a smoky room, that eventually will settle because it's so big, the molecules are so big and they're hanging in the air. Same thing with water. If you have pond water and it's got some, some clay and dirt in the bottom of the jar and mixed with the water, it will be brown, muddy water. But if you leave that, the brown, muddy water will turn clear and it'll have dirt at the bottom of the jar. So the big molecules, gravity's pulling on them and if they're so much bigger than the others, they will continuously fall, 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 and fall through and eventually fall to the bottom. So if you have something huge, like um, you know beef stew, and you have a mixture of these various things to where you have really big pieces of meat and carrot and whatever all together, that would be heterogeneous mixture. But if you have something so small that the molecules are so tiny that the air molecules are really the same size as they are, that is called a homogeneous solution, and like Kool-Aid will never settle out. Milk would settle out. If you just milked a cow, you would have the cream that would float to the top because of all the fat. It has a low density and it's, it's rising to the top, and all the buttermilk would, would be at the bottom. Uh, the dairy will homogenize the milk. So if you buy milk at the store, it's homogenized, meaning it's chopped up so tiny uh, that all of the butter fat is cho chopped up into teeny teeny little pieces and it is small enough to kind of hang out in the milk and so it never really just falls to the bottom. So a colloid is halfway between a Kool-Aid that'll never settle out and uh, beef stew which will settle out or dirt in the air or dirt in the water or that'll fall out because of its size. So it's like intermediate size. So we're talking about five to a thousand nanometers. So this is an atom level. So uh, this is in the um, atomic level, so the in intercell level. So almost as big as a cell, not quite. That's how big colloids are, right? So there's different types of colloids. So you've got aerosols, Okay, so which is either a gas and a liquid or a gas and a, and a solid. So an aerosol would be like smoke or fog, something like that. You have foams, which are gas and liquid. So like if you whip uh, air into whipped cream, you make bubbles into the whipped cream and make it real light and fluffy, that is a foam. An emulsion is two liquids inside of each other. So if you were to take, say, olive oil and vinegar or olive oil and water and you froth it, you emulsify the oil into the water. Now, eventually it's going to settle out. It'll separate, but if you emulsify it before you put it on the salad, uh, then you'll get the oil and the, and the vinegar uh, together. That's an emulsification. Milk is an emulsification because there's several different kinds of um, liquids in there. A sole, okay, um, is a liquid and a solid. So that would be something that is floating in the liquid but doesn't fall out. So paint would be an example of a sole. Okay? Um, a sole foam is a solid and a gas that doesn't, uh, doesn't eventually pop out. So a marshmallow would be a good, good example of, of a solid foam. A solid emulsion is, is a solid plus a liquid. So you've got um, milk fat, or milk essentially does, um, suspended inside solid butter fat. So uh, like milk or buttermilk inside butter fat is butter. Because the butter would be too hard to cut, so you need it kind of frothed it a little bit, and that is with, usually with some milk, you froth butter with milk. And then solid, a solid and a solid, there's a couple kinds of uh, solutions. Um, um, different types of stained glass, like ruby colored stained glass would be an example of a sol and a sol. So uh, different kinds, and these are all, they eventually, um, they eventually move around, the, 
they're too small to be gra to fall out by gravity, but they're too little to be considered um, a homo homogeneous. A neat physical effect for colloids is called the Tyndall effect, and a Tyndall effect will separate rays of light because they bump into the things and basically make shadows, and that's what's happening. The light is hitting these blobs of fat or, or smoke pieces or pieces of dirt and can't get through, and you get some shadows, and you end up seeing the beams of light. So if you were to say at the top of the picture you've got the first one is a colloid and the second one is a solution. So the solution, you really can't see the light very well. You can see it a little bit. But the colloid, since the particles are bigger, you can really see the beams of light. So you can see beams of light, say, of your car on a foggy night. You can see headlight beams. You can see beams of sunlight through clouds, and you, they you know, look like the angels are singing. And then also, it's uh, sunsets, really red Kanawha Valley sunsets. This is a good example of the Tyndall effect because the pollution in the air does, uh, scatters the light and you end up with lots of long, low um, wavelength, a uh, long wa wavelength red light. And so sunsets, especially low on the horizon sunsets, um, West Virginia sunsets, sometimes you're looking at a mountain and the mountain's in the way and you don't really get sunset. But if it's on the horizon, uh, a lot of times you'll get nice red sunsets for that reason. Um, colloids in biological systems, um, every cell is separated from one set of fluids from another set of fluids by a membrane. And the membranes are made up of molecules that really can't dissolve well. Uh, so you have long chains of fats, like fats would float in water, so it doesn't dissolve well. So normally you have membranes that are made up of a two-part molecule. The end is called a hydrophilic end, and it will essentially dissolve in water. The other part of the molecule, a hydrophobic end, is something that will not dissolve in water, and so it will orient orient itself in such that the part that doesn't dissolve in water kind of comes to the inside and the part that it, that dissolves in water will go towards the outside and you end up with a shape and every cell in your body is made up of membranes made up of of these hydrophilic hydrophobic compounds um, and these are colloids so these colloids because they have a hydrophilic end can suspend in water as long as the hydrophobic end is kind of hidden out of the way. As long as on the outside is the hydrophilic, it will suspend in the water. The water has enough pull on it to keep it from falling out, even if it's a really, really large molecule. There's some very large molecules in your blood that wouldn't fall out because on the outside, you've got these hydrophilic ends that are engaging in the water and the insides are all hydrophobic or fatty ends that would, would otherwise float, in the float on top of the water and not be embedded in the water. This is an example, this is called sodium serrate. Um, the serrate is a hydrocarbon and it would not dissolve in water, it would be hydrophobic. And then the sodium end is, um, is kind of a charge. So you end up with some oxygen, the oxygen's negative, the oxygen attaches to a, high, to a sodium, so the sodium hydrogen compound is, uh, has lots of, it, it's, it's charged, plus the oxygen uh, is, uh, can, can form a hydrogen bonding, and so it engages with the water. And then the tail would essentially kind of tuck out of the way, and if you were to have thousands of these, all the water loving would be on the outside and all the tails would be on the inside. That's how your cell membranes work.